Hello everybody, and welcome back to Surf Rack Collectibles. Today is our first unboxing of some CGC graded comic books. Now, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you've seen us unbox some other things such as the CGC graded trading cards, Pokemon Magic the Gathering, some uh, WADA graded video games, some AFA graded video game consoles, and some AFA graded action figures as well. But this is our first unboxing of some CGC graded comic books. So we're gonna kick this off right and start with some Golden Age titles. Now. These are all going to be EC Comics. If you're not familiar with EC Comics, Entertainment Comics, they ran from the mid-40s to the mid-50s. Uh, they were originally begun by Maxwell Gaines. Uh, after he died in a boating accident, his son, Bill Gaines, took over the company. And that is one the one that brought it to prominence. Bill Gaines, everybody knows that name in the comic book industry. You know, the EC published under Bill Gaines a bunch of crime titles, uh, sci-fi titles, dark fantasy titles, a horror, and some... Uh, military titles as well so they're mostly known for their horror and crime and sci-fi titles you know that you have tales of tales from the crypt in there shock suspense stories which is what these are this is actually only shock suspense titles so really excited to show you guys these there's crime suspense as well like i mentioned tales of the crypt they also started mad uh, mad magazine later in the late mid 50s and it ran from the mid 50s on that was actually after the congressional committee on the juvenile delinquency they kind of almost pushed the company out of business um if you're not familiar with the whole ec comics bill gaines story it's one that you should definitely read about you know anybody that's been collecting golden age books or comics in general typically knows the story of bill gaines and ec comics now like i mentioned they mostly published crime horror kind of suspenseful thrilling sci-fi type of books in the 40s and 50s now it was during that period of time also, right after, you know, it was post-war America. It was kind of the white picket fence, apple pie type time for America. And the these comic books, they were not well received by parents. And there was actually a congressional committee started on juvenile delinquency. They actually investigated this. They invited publishers to attend and testify on to Congress to explain to them, you know, why we, they should be allowed to sell their books to children. So everybody thought these books were corrupting our youth, you know, turn them into drug addicts and criminals and, you know, perverts and just delinquents in general. Bill Gaines was the only one who went to Congress to testify for, free, you know, freedom of speech and freedom of the press. So, uh, of course, it, almost, it cost him his career, more or less. You know, it really drove the company down. They pretty much went under in the 50s. You know, they started Mad Magazine, but all the other titles, you know, all their shocking titles and all their thrillers and crime titles were were gone. So it really destroyed the company, really destroyed Bill Gaines, his career, him personally. So, you know, he stood up and fought for what he thought was right and the freedom of speech. You know, our freedoms that people should be fighting for, you know, he stood up. He was the only one that did it. So, you know, it's something to be loud of for and praise for. He did, you know, he did a good thing for the comic book industry, for publishers in general. It was during a time, you know, there's the whole Red Scare era in America. So it was during a time that there was a lot to be fearful of, you know, and America was looking inward and seeing, trying to make sure that we weren't destroying ourselves from the inside out. So, you know, it was just that time in American history. A lot of these books were burned. Uh, they actually held book burnings. This is during the Hayes period, you know, when they had all the book burnings for p books they did not believe were promoting the American dream or American youth in the correct fashion. So they burned a lot of these comics, including superhero comics, but most, you know, more importantly, the all these crime, horror, you know, shocking comics, you know, over the 40s and 50s. So these books here, there's not a lot of them out there. They were burned. They were destroyed. Children, you know, they didn't want their parents to find them, so they always rolled them up and stuck them in their back pocket or shoved them under their mattress, so they weren't kept nice. So to find these in high grade are tough. The pinnacle of anybody's collection are some actual Bill Gaines file copies. Now, these are actual copies that Bill Gaines himself held back in his personal files, you know, for his own collection. Of course, once he passed away, these were auctioned off, so they are out there. Those are the highest grade copies. These here, we, we expect these to be all mid-grade. You know, this was a single owner collection that we purchased. This guy was collecting these comics his whole life. He stopped, you know, about 30 years ago. So these have just been sitting around for quite a while. We expect these to be all mid-grade books, but still, you know, once you start getting into the later issues, it's only an 18-issue series. So once you start getting like 14 and above, like 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, those books start getting more and more scarce. The distribution was lower. The production run was lower. And, you know, people weren't reading them as much. This was actually getting later in the series. So this is when people were kind of turning away from those books because, you know, it was turning you into a, a criminal. 
you know, and that's that's what Congress was declaring. So a lot of those books are much less prevalent and, you know, out there in the secondary market today. You'll find some of the earlier copies in a higher grade, better grade. But if you're looking for some of the later copies, mid grade is great for your collection. If you've got a nice 5.0 or better, those are still really good books to have in your collection. So we sent in about 12 uh, to 14 of these Shock Suspense titles. So really excited to cut it in this box and show you guys what we have here. We haven't seen these yet, so we're excited to see what kind of grades we got. Like I said, we expect them all to be around mid-grade, but you know, maybe we'll get surprised. Okay, there are 12 here, so we only sent in 12. It looks like they are arranged in chronological order, so let's go ahead and get started with the first issue in our set here which it looks to be issue number two. Take some of this stuffing out of here. Issue number two is a 5.5. Now this here is a Wally Wood cover. You know, Bill Gaines, another thing he did was he really wanted the art to be better than anything else you saw on the, on the stand. So he really tried to find the most talented artists. Some of the freelance artists he hired for his covers were some of the best in the industry at the time. So he picked artists, you know, like Johnny Craig, Al Feinstein, Wally Wood, Jack Davis, and Frank Franzetta actually drew panels for his comics as well. So some great artists, some great freelance artists at the time. You know, he really wanted his art to shine and the stories to shine. So these were not just rags, you know, and superhero comics that were thrown together just to sell Tencent comics to children. These were actually, he really focused on the storytelling and the art. So these are great. You know, that's another reason a lot of people collect these golden age EC titles because the art's great and the storytelling is wonderful. So this one here, a nice solid 5.5 for issue number two. This is the, the fight scene, the fight cover, as it's often known. A nice solid grade for issue number two. Okay. Our next book is issue number five. This is not a complete run. This is just part of the run. Some of the issues were missing. Some of the issues are very, you can get very costly even in mid-grade. Um, so some of the issues won't be in this particular run. This is a five. Now this, no, sorry, this is issue number five. This is a 5.5. Now this is the hanging, the hanging cover. This drew a lot of ire from parents that did not want their boys reading this particular issue because of this cover art. Now this is a Wally Wood cover as well. This is the hanging cover. This I believe was brought up in the congressional hearings against Bill Gaines when he went to speak to them. So this was kind of held against him. A lot of these covers will be, you know, they're meant to shock, you know, it's called shock suspense. They're meant to shock the boys into wanting to buy the books and find out what's going on. So they accomplished their goal, you know, to be shocking. And that's what they are. A nice solid 5.5 for issue number five. Issue number nine. Now we're kicking it up a notch. This is a 6.5. Issue number nine. Now this here is an Al, Al Fieldstein cover. This is, of course, the crows, I mean, the vultures here, eating the man alive. This one here, a 6.5 is a great grade. Like I said, anything above a five is pretty, it's good to add to your collection. The higher you go, of course, the better. But, you know, unless you're unless you're willing to shell out thousands of dollars for one of the uh, Bill Gaines file copies, you know, these mid-grade copies will probably the only one, be the only ones you see. And we know who has most of the Bill Gaines file copies. We actually have a, a complete collection of Shock Suspense and of the Crime Suspense in Bill Gaines copies. So we own one of each of those. We know who owns quite a few of the other ones. So there's not going to be a lot of the Bill Gaines copies out there. So pick up some of these nice mid-grade books to add these to your collection. None of these books today should be over a thousand dollars i don't believe you know you should still be able to pick these books up for about a thousand dollars or less in today's market so nice 6.5 mid-grade book for issue number nine issue number 10 5.0 this is a jack cayman cover nice solid mid-grade 5.0 is right in the middle this one here nice bold colors nothing missing from covers no scratches, no, ta no, no tears, no rips, no tape. Nice, unrestored cover. Nice mid-grade copy. Okay, number 11. Now this is a 4.5. So this is probably the lowest grade we've had so far. 
you know, you could probably find issue number 11 and higher than a 4.5 and still, you know, they're, they're, these are a little bit more available on the market. They don't start getting tough until you get above 14. 14 and up start getting a little tougher to find, but this one here you should be able to find a little better grade. Surprised why this one, um, there's some creasing here on the top corners. And that's probably why. Oh, and there's on the back, if you can see, there's a little sun damage here on the back. So maybe that's why I knocked it down, but still 4.5, nice solid mid grade. This one here, you can find better grade at, you know, affordable price. So still pleased with the 4.5. Oh man. Okay. This is issue number 12. Check this out. An 8.5. Now, this is one of the best graded copies we've seen in this book. This is a tough, tough book to find for some reason. It's not as high up as, you know, later in the series as some of the other titles, but tough book to find. This is an Alf, Alf Field Scene cover as well. Now, this is the Junkie cover. The Monkey on My Back cover, sometimes it's known. This is, you know, an 8.5. This is a fantastic book. Now, this one will be over $1,000. It'll probably cost you about $1,500 to $2,000 for this particular grade. But this one here is a fantastic cover. Very, very tough to find. You know, if you can find this one in mid-grade or higher, this one to add to your collection. People do look for this one. We actually help the client try to put together a complete run of these in, in mid, mid to high grade. This is a tough one to find. So, wish we had this one back then because this is probably one of the best grades we've seen of this one besides our own file copy that we have. Anti-drug story, it says. This here, once again, one of the ones that was mentioned during the congressional hearings. Okay, well, it went from an 8.5 8 down to a 3.5. Kind of came all the way back. This here is the Jack Cameron cover as well, but this has Frank Franzetta art. Now, Frank Franzetta drew art for this particular uh, issue. This is actually Frank Franzetta's only solo story for EC Comics. It actually says so right here on the, on the label. Now, this issue number 13, the 3.5, this is tough to find because of Frank Franzetta's name. You know, there's Frank Franzetta collectors out there that just collect his art, his work, his comics, anything that he touched, you know, they want to own. So there are a lot of Frank Franzetta art, uh, collectors out there that just focus on him. So you got to contend with that in addition to Golden Age collectors, in addition to EC collectors, in addition to Shock Suspense collectors. So anything Frank Franzetta is going to draw attention. This one here, 3.5. Not a great grade. Still, you know, three, four, five hundred dollar book in today's market. You know, this is the boy throwing, uh, the man throwing his girlfriend off the roller coaster. So, this is one you probably didn't want your eight year old son to read back in the 40s and 50s, but shocking at the time. Not as shocking today, but still, you know, the cup, the art, it was meant to shock you. It was meant to draw you in and make you want to buy the buy the issue. And like I said, it worked. These these books were very popular when they came out. So that's, as well as the crime suspense, as well as the uh, Tales from the Crypt. You know, he had a lot of really, really hot titles. Oh, here we go. Another 13. Now, this one here is much better. 6.5. Now you're talking about a $1,000 book, maybe a little bit more. You know, once again, Frank Rosetta Art. Uh, check came in cover. You know, this one here is... I mean, look at the color. I'll show you here the difference here. Look at the... At the the blue on this one here, as opposed to the blue here, a little bit dingier, much brighter colors. You know, that's, uh, that's why I got the, uh, that's why I got the 6.5. You got a much brighter color panel here. No real creasing, no real dings, no real, there's a little teeny, teeny chip in the corner there. But other than that, solid cover, solid grade, nice, nice grade for the issue. Yeah, that's a nice grade for that one. You know, it surprises me some, sometimes when you look at these books that are 40, 50, 60, 70 years old, how bright the colors still are. You know, these are meant to be read and thrown away. So the fact that they actually lasted in any condition like this, especially after all the book burnings of the 40s and 50s, like I mentioned before, and just the kids, you know, just throwing them around and, and reading them and sharing them, just surprised that any of these really lasted. Here's issue number 14. Now we're starting to get a little higher. Now they're going to start getting a little more scarce. This is 6.0. This is the... Gangster being gunned down here. Now this here is a, this is a Wally Wood cover. You can tell by the art. This is a, um, it's, like I said, issue number 14 and a 6.0. Nice grade for this particular issue. These books, once you get a 14 and above, they do start getting difficult. So anything mid-grade or higher is great to add to your collection. So what do we have here? The interrogation cover, number 16. Now this here is another 6.0. 
a Jack Kamen cover. Once again, 6.0, nice solid mid-grade, one worth adding to your collection. Still under $1,000 in today's market. But, you know, a lot of people are starting to pick up these uh, AC comics. A lot of people are starting to look at the populations and realize there's not a lot of these books out there. There's not a lot of it that have been graded even in low grade. So people are rushing into some of these Golden Age books, especially, you know, the EC titles and Shock Suspense, Crime Suspense, Tales, uh, Tales from the Crypt. Those titles are definitely drawing a lot of attention. So if you're looking to start collecting this series, get in earlier rather than later. There's not going to be a lot of these books floating around out there. Okay, issue number 17. This is 6.5, which is a great grade for that number issue. You know, 17, 18 are the toughest ones to get in high grade. Like I said, low distribution. People didn't really carry that book then, and it's low production runs as well. So, and they're also dark covers. The dark covers do not last very well. You know, you got to take really good care of these to keep these from showing a lot of wear, a lot of finger dings. Any kind of movement increasing will show on dark covers. So, 6.5. You know, that's a great grade for this cover. Nice dark cover. This is a Joe Orlando, George Evans and Joe Orlando art for this particular issue. Very nice, very nice dark cover here. Well-preserved, 6.5. Great grade for issue number 17. And that's our last book. And our last book happens to be issue number 18. Now this here is a 5.5. Solid grade for issue number 18. This here is... Bernard Kingston art, sorry, Kriegstein, sorry, I misread that. Bernard Kriegstein, not as familiar with that particular cover artist. This might be one of the only covers he did for this particular series. Like I said, you don't see this one as much, so I've seen a lot of the other covers much more often than I've seen issue number 18. Now this one here, tough to find. This is a 5.5, nice solid mid-grade book, worth adding to your collection. Should be able to get this one here in this grade for under $1,000, maybe around that, maybe $1,000. But, you know, once again, these dark color panel on top and just the dark edges, they do not they do not last well, especially on the bottom and across the top. So that's why this one here got a 5.5. It's pretty solid color. The back's a little dingy. You know, that's that took it down in the grading as well. But the cover, very solid. Very nice grade for this particular issue. So there you have our first CGC unboxings. Please let us know what you think in the comment section below. Let us know what you think about the Shock Suspense and the EC Comics in general. We love to hear, you know, EC Comics and the Shock Suspense title specifically are, are one of our personal favorites. You know, the EC books, we've been collecting those for years personally. A lot of us here in the office have been collecting the EC titles. So let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And as always, please remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thank you for joining us here on Certified Collectibles, and we'll see you again next time.